So then I think we will start. This is the last session before we have the nice release party of CUPS filters 2.0, two distributions, Fedora 38 and Ubuntu 23.04 Luna Lobster, the first two distributions with CUPS filters 2.0. So everyone wants to know what we are celebrating, therefore we have this session here, and I will tell a little bit about the new architecture in CUPS Filters 2.0 and do some demos here with this printer about the new changes, also especially the changes in the graphical user interfaces which are required for the new architecture in printing. And so, what, what was leading to all this work and the new architecture is that we have, uh, that we have uh, CUPS, and CUPS was created 20 years ago, uh, more than 20 years ago, and in 2000 was uh, version 1.0, and in that time, uh, Unix, but Linux was already there for 10 years, but there was still ma a lot of Unix, and Unix was used in computing centers with either text printers or postscript printers. And so in Linux, Unix, and similar operating systems, we had a postscript-centric print workflow, meaning applications send postscript. And this postscript is passed on to the printer, or it has to be converted by a driver if the printer is not postscript. And CUPS was created on top of this postscript-centric uh, post workflow. The main motivation was that one wanted to give the user access to all the printer capabilities like trace, black and white, color, uh, duplex, and so on. And so one made use of a uh, uh, of PostScript and that for PostScript printers for Windows and Mac, the manufacturers made so-called PPD files, PostScript printer description files, which described all the uh, capabilities and user settable options. And so CUPS made use of these files. And especially also for the non-PostScript printer, Mike Sweet, the author of CUPS, has extended the PPD file format by adding a line CUPS filter, and in this line is, is, is mentioned a filter which turns the incoming data, in most cases, in, in mo uh, often post, in most, in most cases postscript or uh, CUPS specific raster format into the printer's uh, native format. And this is the way CUPS supports printers all the time up, up, to, uh, up to now. And PPD files, PostScript printer description files, were only uh, were developed by Adobe for PostScript and not really continued to be developed after 1984. And so CUPS started already on, on a, a totally obsolete format, but it was useful, so we, uh, we uh, could print. And, uh, Is the microphone working or? Yes, and so uh, during the long time up to now, more than 10 years ago, Mike Sweet and me, we have abolished uh, PostScript as the standard printing format and replaced it by PDF and then later, and so the application sent PDF to CUPS and PDF and everything which was not PDF and sent to CUPS was turned into PDF and from the PDF uh, the printer's native format was created by CUPS. So we had the PDF-centric printing workflow but still PPD file, postscript printer description files is, is a little bit strange and so Already 10 years ago, Mike Sweet has uh, deprecated PPD files, but there was nothing better, so they were continued to be used. And so later on, there came IPP everywhere, IPP driverless printing. 
And, we, and so the printers were IPP printers, Internet Printing Protocol, and, one, and they could be asked by IPP for their capabilities. And they only use standard protocols like PP, PDF, uh, uh, Capswaster, Applewaster, PWGWaster, uh, PCLM, and so one actually does not need PPD files anymore. And so Mike Sweet came 2018 with the idea for the non-driverless printers, which do not this driverless IPP printer printing. We create as a driver printer applications, an emulation of, an, uh, of, a, uh, of a driverless IPP printer, which on the other side turns the data into the printer's format and sends it on to the printer. And so we can get an all IPP workflow. Michael Sweet is developing a CUPS 3.x, which does not support PPD files anymore, but only supports driverless IPP printers. And this is the new architecture. We are all IPP, we have no PPD files. And so, uh, so uh, we don't, we, we don't have classic printer drivers or filters uh, and PPD files, which we add to CUPS. But we, CUPS understands only IPP driverless printers. And for the non-driverless printers, we have to emulate a driverless printer by a printer application. And this, and one thing, one property of CUPS, which is, exists already for some years, is that if we have a driverless IPP printer in the network, CUP sees this printer, and one does not need to create a print queue manually for it. It is simply there, and the print client sees it by uh, functionality of libcups, or by uh, the GTK developers resampling the functionality of libcups, and so the print dialog sees, oh, there's a network printer, sends a job to, this, to the CUPS queue of the printer, which does not exist, because we did not create manually CUPS queue for it. CUPS automatically creates a queue, prints the job, and after one minute of inactivity, CUPS removes the queue again. And this mechanism, that CUPS does not need a permanent manually created queue, but can create a queue on demand for an, for an IPP printer, many print dialogues do not support, and so we had to find a solution for that. And this will also part of this demo that I show the modified print dialogues which support this and how we have implemented this. So here you see a diagram. This is on the, on the left-hand side is the old cups. So the cups, the current cups 2.x, it can already print to driverless printers via the automatic queues which I mentioned. Does not need a driver, does not need a PPD file. The current cups still creates a PPD file for internal use. The, the 3.0 will not do it anymore, but you do not need to supply a PPD file. Then you have postscript printers. For a postscript printer, you have to supply a PPD file. And you have non-postscript printers. They need a PPD file and a driver filter. And on the right-hand side is the CUPS 3.x, which only understands IPP driverless, the IPP driverless printer directly. The PostScript printer needs the PostScript printer application, which internally uses the P PPD files. And the non-PostScript printer needs any suitable printer application. And now we have two pieces of graphical user interface, which we need in terms of printing. One is the printer setup tool. And this is where you see all, all printers which are available, where you create queues for, the print, for your printers. 
you know it already, you buy a new printer, what you have to do is to open the GNOME control center, go onto the printers panel, click add printer to create a print view. Or you use system config printer for that. And, and uh, this is the printer setup tool. The printer setup tool also lists the printers which are already set up. These are usually the CUPS views in the GNOME control center which you have. And the CUPS queues, and on, on, the, on, on, on each entry, you see a button for, for configuration options. You can set the PPD options uh, defaults. You can set, you can change the driver, you can remove the queue, and so. And, the, and uh, And if we have the new architecture, we do not need to create print queues for it. Our available printers are existing IP, driverless IPP print services. So what a printer setup tool has to do is not to, show, to, to list the CUPS queues. It has to list the available IPP print services, which it looks up by DNSSD. Because an IPP print service advertises itself by DNSSD. And as we have a transition, we have still CUPS 2.x all, all, all the way around. We will, by the end of this year, hopefully have CUPS 3.x, but not immediately every distro will overtake it. We have a time where there's CUPS 2.x around and CUPS 3.x around, but we want, do not want to say CUPS 2.x can use GNOME up to version 45, and CUPS 3.x has to use GNOME from 46 uh, and later. And so we will have to create, do the GNOME uh, control center to support both. So it will list permanent CUPS queues and it will list also IPP services. So you see all available printers, independent which CUPS, que CUPS version you have. If you have 3.x, it will not show any CUPS queues but only uh, IPP services. And the add printer button of the GNOME control center will be similar. It can set up printers with classic drivers but also with printer applications. So when we get into the new architecture, we will, uh, yes, we have the main window in the, in the GNOME control center, which is the, when you simply click on printers, and there you see the list of available printers. If the old is, is uh, permanent CUPS queues and the new is IPP services, and you have the add printer window, it's when you click the add printer button. And you know the classic way was it discovered printers and you selected one of them, it suggested automatically a driver for it, which is actually a PPD file. And so you had your uh, point queue, or you could also uh, change this driver and go into another PPD file, and this, this is the old way. And the new way is it would discover a, a non-driverless printer, for, uh, which is not available as an IPP print service. And so it will look up on open printing through a lookup service. First, it will look on the system whether already a print application is installed. And if it does not find one, it will look up on, uh, on, uh, on open printing via lookup service whether in the Snap Store there's a print application and automatically install it for this printer. And to configure the printer, it, can, it, it, it will uh, uh, give you a button to open the web interface of the printer application. And there you set up the print queue for the non-driverless printer. And when you have set up the print queue in the printer application, the printer application advertises itself as an IPP service, and so you see the printer in the main list. And in the main list, one thing is, if an IPP service is listed, there you don't get buttons for setting PPD options for changing the driver or for removing this queue. You get simply a button for opening the web interface of the service, which means the web interface inside this printer 
if it's a print, uh, native printer or the web interface of a printer application, if it's a printer application. And another thing are the print dialogs. You know you have a print dialog when you click on print in any GUI application, like LibreOffice or GNOME, uh, GNOME Text Editor or something like that. You will see a list of the available printers and you, you choose a printer, click on it, and when you click on a printer, the, the other tabs of the dialog are updated to the properties of the printer and there you can set, set the properties of the printer like paper size, paper tray, black and white color, resolution, quality and so on. And what the print dialog, where the data comes from is currently fr simply from the cup skews which are set up and from the PPD files which are assigned to each cup skew. And for the new architecture, these available printers have to be like the printer setup tool, be IPP services, the available IPP services. And the properties on the other tabs have to, get, have to be uh, pulled from the IPP service, from the printer, by do, sending a get, uh, get printer attributes request to the printer, and the printer answers with all its properties, and these properties are then put into the tabs of, of the print dialog, so that one can do the settings. And also, this, we, uh, this answer contains the data format which the printer prints, and so that the print dialog or that, that we also know in which format the job has to get converted. And one thing is we, have very, uh, we, we need changes on the print dialogs. We need to take care that no, none of the print dialog tries, for example, to directly download PPD files from CUPS. We also need to take care that print dialog see IPP services, that they do not require permanent CUPS queues for listing an available printer. You know there are IPP services for these, we don't need a CUPS queue. And, pr and print dialogs, uh, and this, w and this must be taken care of with all print dialogues. And, so, and, and we have so many. The print dialogues are not made by the developers of CUPS. They are not made by Open Printing. They are made by the developers of KDE and GNOME, and also of some application, LibreOffice, Mozilla, Chromium. And so there are many print dialogues, big projects, no one in the project who is really motivated to work a lot of on printing. And so the print dialogues are often somewhat be behind the changes in CUPS. And this is a little bit of a problem. So that we came to the idea to move the communication of the print dialog with CUPS or with any other print technolo technology away from the maintainers of the GUI and to the maintainers of the print technology, open printing for CUPS. And if there are some, some MyQt uh, cloud printing service, then the developer of MyQt cloud printing service is supposed to also provide a, a, a backend. Which is which he makes a, which they make available through the Snap Store, for example, and so it, it we create backends for the print dialogs for each print service, and these backends are independent of the graphical user interfaces. They are debug services, and the print dialogs do not communicate with CUPS or any other print service. The print dialogs they simply shout into the debug. I want to list all printers. And then all backends 
are, look, are listing their printers, their technologies printers, answer them back to the print dialog, and the print dialog displays them. And so gets the complete list. And another thing, you click on the printer and the print dialog, and then the print dialog shouts into the D bus, I want to have the properties of this printer. And then the appropriate backend answers back with the properties. And in the end, I click on print, and then the print dialog shouts into the D bus, I want to print the job. And then the right print, print backend answers back, I take the job and prints the job. And, and this we call the common print dialog backends because they are common for all graphical user interfaces, for all applications, and they are independent, so, and in the hands of the developers of the print technologies. And so if something changes in CUPS, we do not do only the change in CUPS, we change also the print, we change also the we change also the, how to say, the, the print dialog backend, and so the print dialog can cope with the change. And we do it in the same pace as with cups, and so nothing is behind. Yes, yes, and this is the principle, and I have several, in several Google Summer of Codes, including the current one, I have several contributors who have worked on it and are working on it, and in GTK, it, in, the, in the GTK print dialog, I hope Marek is here, we, uh, we ha, uh, it got already ex accepted. Gorav Guleria did a lot of great work in, in 2022, and in, in some weeks ago, so, uh, it got accepted, the, pull requ the merge request into GTK, so GTK supports this principle. And he is shortly before getting them merged also in Qt, so the Q, uh, in, in Qt, so the Qt print dialog will get Qt soon too. And in this year's Google Summer of Code, I have a contributor who in, wants to do it on LibreOffice, on uh, Mozilla, which is Firefox and Thunderbird, and on uh, Chromium. So that the applications with own print dialogs get also covered. And Gorab Goleria is mentoring this uh, new Google Summer of Code contributor. And for the GNOME Control Center, Mohit Verma, also of Google Summer of uh, Code 2022, is working on it. And he will do it in this Google Summer of Code 2023-2. So now we have a demo. We will, we have a printer here. This is an IPP driverless printer, but one can also use it as a classical PostScript printer. And we will see what happens. By the way, these slides are also available on the Linux Application Summit website. And in the slides, as you can see here, they are also documented how this demo works, where the software comes from. I have for, for everyone for testing created a PPA for Ubuntu uh, 23.04, Luna Lobster, where you can replace the GUI, the relevant GUI packages so that you can use the new printing uh, architecture. So what we have We have here a printer. This is this Canon printer. And the computer sees it. You see it when you enter the driverless command. And we have 
permanent cup skews. Here are two permanent cup skews. These are completely different ones from some other printer which we do not hear. And you do not see the Canon printer here. Ah, yes, yes, we are. Perhaps I will quickly do the dem demo in fi in, in within five minutes and and then we do the questions and answers. We have the GNOME co uh, text editor. And uh, if I click Control P, it's the print dialog. We see here now that in the dialog we have uh, the Canon printer. So in, there was no permanent cup skew for it. And this is done by the co common print dialog backends. This dialog does not talk to cups. It shouts into the D bus via, by, via the common print dialog backends libraries. And the cups backend reports this printer here. So you can see P. Here are, the com here are two backends. They were started because I have opened the print dialog, these processes, and one is CUPS, and this reported the printer. And now when you, you are on the printer, you can see here, here you see the paper types it supports, and the paper sources, it has a bi bypass tray and tray one, probably this is the tray one. And the bypass tray, I think one can, yes, this is this one. And it has paper sizes, all common ones. and so on, and then you can here see the quality settings, draft and normal. It has no high quality setting, probably because it's a black and white laser, and, and not a color printer. And here you have settings that you can, uh, for a scale, scale your, your document into the page size when the page size does not match, whether you want to zoom it, whether you want to keep the size and so. And you can print booklets and uh, mirror the printing and so on. And when you click on print, Oh, yes, today, today when uh, on the first te test it's still printed. Is it out of paper or so? So this is the, uh, we, will, we will check it later. The, now I will show another print dialog. There's also focus, focus writer. Yes, now this is a GTK application. And you will also get a print dialog here. And you can see the, the Canon printer is here too. And you see here that it has also duplex. And it has uh, and here you see the paper sizes of it. And you have he, uh, he, here all, all kinds of settings. And here is the print scaling and, and the booklet and so on. And here you can choose the paper and so, so on. And so you see it here, it, it has taken all the properties. Yeah. 
And if I start now, uh, this is an also an emulation of a printer. This is some debugging helper program to emulate a printer. And when I, I get into the print dialog again, you see that it appears here, it's test printer. So this is how the print dialog works. And now we have 10 minutes for questions and discussion before we will celebrate CUPS filters 2.0. Do we have a microphone for, uh, here is a mi uh, Can you get back to the questions that were asked, please? I don't think I just watched, but when they are successful. Yes, yes, they are probably all out of battery, or what is the problem? Yes, yes. Yes, yes. And uh, this not released yet? That yes, they, they, yes they, are released, they are released at least in a better version, and the, and the final release will come shortly. But the distributions can already start with the better versions to package them. And so when, the, when these libraries are packaged and installed and one, one builds, uh, then the current GTK4 or the future QT6 when, when uh, the merge request is accepted or when you distro patch the, mer mer uh, the merge request into it to get it already beforehand, you will have the dialog supporting, uh, you will have the dialog uh, uh, supporting the uh, common print dialog backends. But when you compile the GTK4 or the, or the QT6, you need to give uh, configure options to, so that the CT, CDBD is used, the common print dialog backends, and not CUPS being used because the versions of, the, of, of uh, QT6 and GTK4 support both the native CUPS and the CPDB, and you must, uh, with configure options, select which ones, which one you want to have. Any other question? Yeah. Yes, one thing is we, we did not backport the CPDB support to older GTK versions. I don't know uh, whether perhaps uh, Marek, uh, whether you want to do it. <laughs> yes, and the other thing is you mentioned Firefox uh, of uh, Firefox has its own dialog, and for the Firefox dialog, I have already posted a feature request, and they have already answered it. And I have a Google Sum of Code contributor, as I mentioned, who wants to uh, to adapt uh, 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 to adapt Firefox own dialog to CPDB. Ah, yes, if you use, yeah, yeah, he is asking how it works with the flat packs. If you use flat pack, the, the application is not using its own print dialog. It's, it's using the XDG desktop portal, and this means that the application shouts into the dbus, I want to print, and then the desktop receives it, KDE or GNOME, and then KDE would open the QT dialog, and on or GNOME would open the, uh, the GTK dialog, and this dialog would print, and the QT dialog and the GTK dialog of the current GNOME and the current uh, KDE 
we support the C CPDB. Yes, yes. In, with an with a XDG desktop portal, the application is not responsible anymore to provide a print dialog. The application sends the print job to the desktop, and the desktop opens a print dialog. Common for all applications, the same print dialog. This is done with the idea that the flat pack is encapsulated, and so that the the data can be sent to the printing system. It must get out of, out of the sandbox. And what is done is to connect by D-Bus to uh, the portal. And the portal uh, passes the data to the desktop. And the desktop opens a print dialog so that the user can print. Because the desktop is not in the sandbox. And so the desktop has access to CUPS or to the common point dialog backends. So, and now we can celebrate the release of CUPS Filters 2.0.